Hi guys, what's going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So today we are revisiting the revisit of the Laos, because of course, as with almost all my videos, as soon as I do a video on it, they go and buff it. <laughs> so the last video is already out of date. Um, so we wanted to come back to them because they've made a few interesting changes and I actually was quite enjoying them pre-buff. So now they've changed a few more things, it's sort of getting even better. So firstly, what did they change in the buff? Well, they reduced the cooldown of the bludgeon, which is this one here. Um, they did a four second cooldown reduction. On top of that, they basically increased its blunt penetration and blunt damage and increased the blunt penetration and blunt damage of devastation as well. So it's basically buffed the two abilities of these and they've also increased the fire rate of the, the muskets on their sort of fire lancers, for want of a better word, and they fire more shots as well. So quite a reasonable buff overall to the unit. It's made quite a big difference to it. Has made it quite a powerful unit. Um, so obviously I've gone down the bottom to veterancy line basically for the devastation. I think the devastation is kind of the way to go. I really like this devastation. Although, you know, back in season six when this unit first came out as a, as a promoted unit, the devastation was really crazy and the bludgeon was kind of fairly meh. You know, Devastation was where it was at. Bludgeon is a lot more effective now, and with the cooldown reduction, it starts to get really quite viable. On top of that, since I last played, now they've introduced that cooldown reduction on Bludgeon, having this um, Lower Ranger's extra Bludgeon cooldown reduction doctrine becomes even more effective, because as a percentage, that 3 seconds is now larger, and so it becomes even more worthwhile me throwing this extra 3 second reduction on it. And I think I took off some random health doctrine. I don't even know why I had that on it, to be honest. So yeah, that three second bludgeon reduction is now really quite good. On top of that, we get a movement speed uh, buff as well as a slight range damage reduction. And we get that increased bludgeon damage. That's a 5% increase on top of the buff they've just given it as well, which makes it really nice. And of course, a bit of blunt damage and a little bit of piercing defense. They are a fairly tanky unit, which doesn't really reflect in their defensive stats. Well, 12,000, nearly 13,000 HP is quite decent, but 670, 690 piercing and, and slashing defense isn't... It's higher than that in reality. There's some soft stats to this unit which makes them fairly tanky. I find they tend to resist fairly well. And on the bludgeon now, it, they basically almost always um, do it because they cause knockback and because they get this immune to dazed, it means they always activate their damage. So it almost gives them a, an element of protection because they bludgeon, it stuns everyone else and they become immune to being stunned. So it's like a double whammy, which really makes them quite an effective unit. But anyway, enough talking about them. Let's see what we can do with them in battle. See if we can sort of mow down a few enemies or bludgeon some people to death. So we kick things off on a little bit of a Riverland Castle Assault. Um, and well, we haven't got long left on the game. And we're really making our final team push for the A point. So essentially, I've got no choice here. Grab the Laos and just going straight in. So we come straight down the center, straight for the gun charge, and straight in. As soon as I get in, I'm going on with my devastation. I let the devastation run for a short while before I do anything else. We pick up a couple of hero kills before I go on with the bludgeon. Straight in the middle of an enemy unit now, and you can see the amount of damage we're doing. Picked up a couple of hero kills, rapidly picking up unit kills. This unit is just absolutely intense. Push them into the fray. Start trying to push them back onto those unit of crossbows that were kind of at the back. And go over to stab a few as well. Why not? Always fun stabbing a few units of crossbows. Um, and with that, we basically cleared out and got the cap on the A point. Come back round and we've got a unit of palace guards. My gun charges off cooldown, so I go straight in with that and straight activate up my bludgeon. And you start to see, look, we're to 110 kills now already. My devastation comes off cooldown. We get in with that as well and basically finish off that unit of palace guards to over 120 kills even though admittedly it does finish off the bulk of the left of the unit but that's why i think they work really well in these large scale fights they just do so much damage so much aoe damage they almost started to feel a little bit like they did back when we were in season six even with only a few of them left we can charge into this other unit of um palace guards as well and they're still quite effective they still pick up kills because that blunt damage is just so intense and that's really what makes them such an epic unit. So yeah, just as an example of not even not playing very well with them, just YOLO charging them onto an A point because we're about to lose the match. 
shows how effective they can be. Another real benefit to them is they just absolutely muller Iron Reapers. They just absolutely bludgeon them to death. Because the blunt penetration is so high, they just completely overwhelm the Iron Reaper's armour. So each hit is a couple of thousand. So it just completely flattens them in a matter of seconds. Which, given how many kind of Reapers we get in the battlefield at the moment, is kind of nice. And for a final clip, on to a little bit of Heilungsford. The map that I can't really say. Um... <laughs> Just pushing in through, already captures the B point, and the team's already capturing A. Just come up and, well, nice unit of archers come down. Obviously, this isn't a problem for any unit of cavalry, but it's just so satisfying sometimes to flatter a unit of archers with cavalry. I don't know, there's just something very wholesome about it. <laughs> Sorry if you're a ranged player. I don't hate you really. Um, but you also get the hero down, which is kind of nice. But with them dead, I can start to push back down because the enemy team has kind of been caught relatively out of position. So we can kind of swing this back round. And actually there's quite a few enemy units here, including things like Reapers. And it's kind of important to remember how much, well, I guess the, I guess the unit kill as well, the hero kill, sorry. But how much of a difference leadership wise killing something like a unit of Reapers is. So only 16 models and you know, over 300 leadership. When you kill stuff like that, the sort of amount of impact you're having on the battle is so much more significant than compared to say that unit of archers. You know, flattening something like the Reapers like that is that someone's basically half their leadership amount. That's basically half the units they can bring to the battle. So that can be really quite significant. Anyway, with them dead, we've got a couple of losses, but it's basically trying to pick our next fight. I was kind of tempted to go through here, but it is a fair bit of a funnel. And unless you've got quite a lot of infantry support kind of in front of you, then it can be kind of a fairly hard one to find a gap through. And that's kind of what I'm hesitating over. Uh, there's a lot of range, but are we really going to be making a sort of concerted push? There's a few medal, there's a few paladins, so there could be a bit of stuff there to make a little bit of a push in. But, you know, you don't want to be first one in and first one right into the front of a unit of pikes or something. And with that many heroes as well, they could do quite an effective job of sort of pinning you down. Particularly those pole axes, which we'll kind of learn a little bit about later on in this clip. So I'm kind of prancing around a little bit, a little bit indecisive about what I really want to do. And ultimately, I kind of conclude that I don't think I'm very happy with trying to get through on that part of the map. So I pull the unit down and I switch around to the other side. Of course, the benefit of cavalry being it doesn't actually take you that long to go around on this map. Because obviously with infantry, it's actually a fair distance. You forget how far the uh, two points are away. Anyway, we come out of the other side. All sorts of just stuff, but all in loose formations. A little bit of stuff everywhere. Go straight in with my devastation. Start picking up kills on units and casualties. Units and casualties? Causing casualties on units and cavalry. There we go. English. Thank you, Evo. Pick ourselves up a little hero kill and get stuck into this unit of berserkers. I was a little bit slow getting my bludgeon activated, to be honest. We do do quite a lot of damage to the berserkers, but it does cost us some casualties as well. Remember, those berserkers get a lot of self here when they're on rage mode. And I think we because we didn't get the devastation on them first... But we only just sort of got the bludgeon, basically. It meant we didn't really get enough damage to sort of overwhelm them quickly. And so they kind of half survived. And then they were able to do a fair bit of damage to us. So it was a fairly costly move. But in all in all, we've picked up about 60 kills or so far. A couple of hero kills with the unit. And just going to get them healed up on the supply point for the final push. Because the team's basically just got the cap there on the C point. And it's going to start to push up and push on to the, uh, onto the final base point. This is where things are going to go slightly wrong. Um, as there is obviously only half a unit left. But obviously one of the weaknesses of any cavalry unit, but can be quite particular these, can just be enemy heroes. And it was a really kind of silly move on my part, but it just kind of highlights how you can kind of counter units like this with certain heroes. But this Poleaxe, come around, got a nice unit, another unit of Berserkers thought, oh, this will be easy. He just lock up his straight into the front of the unit. The unit was really heavily clumped. They don't do anything. They just got stun locked there, I even got myself killed and we barely did any damage at all. When you can target cavalry like that, it could be a really effective way of countering them and just dealing with them. And kudos to that Polax. It was a bad play by me, but he played it very well as well. But anyway, that's all we've got time for on today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed a little mini look at the revisit of the revisit of the revisit of the Laos. On whatever number video we're <laughs> of them now. But keep adjusting them. Stop buffing and nerfing my units. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed it and I shall see you guys all on the next video.